So uh, again, some introduction. I'm uh, a rare self uh, I'm actually in Hong Kong U ENA Eden Technologies. Uh, in Archibald, I also have uh, some positions. So uh, associate editor for the TLT. So one of the e-learning uh, e-learning journals. Uh, and also uh, for the uh, coming year will be the region 10, which is the uh, Asia Pacific region, uh, uh, educational activity committee chair for starting from next year. And also uh, Cindy is also a colleague. And uh, 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 I'm also a advanced HD senior fellow. So we'll apply a principal fellow soon. Mm -hmm. So that's the background. Uh, we will talk about we will talk about the uh, we will give a around 30 minutes uh sharing on the webinar on uh, overall landscape uh, related to e-learning. Uh, by the way, so today's uh, workshop will be, and also training will be in, in English. So uh, because I noticed that there should be some colleagues who are not from local. So we will use English for today's uh, sharing and defa and uh, workshop. So we will talk about, uh, we will spend around 30 minutes to talk about the webinar and then uh, overall landscape. And then, of course, uh, we also provide uh, hands-on practice for all of you. So we will separate into two groups, and then with Cindy and me, so to do the chatbot uh, development. So you will uh, get into the system to dip, 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 dip something. Uh, so uh, no programming skills did actually, so it should be OK. Um, and also debriefing at the end, so have some sharing uh, uh, in a small group, and then to have some uh, discussions, et cetera. So uh, I believe uh, uh, some of you may have some questions on uh, or some questions uh, for whether is uh, AI can be used for assessment, uh, how how is how useful it is, uh, can as if AI will be uh, will be introduced in the future, will, will it uh, there will be no more teachers, no more no more professors in the future, uh, whether we will be, be replaced by AI etc. So. Uh, so can we use uh, AI in small scale or just in a class level or have to be used in a, or can it be used in a whole university level? So, uh, and also can teachers and uh, students understand insights from AI? Because uh, uh, some uh, some of us may, uh, may understand that, oh, does it require lots of uh, digital literacy or program literacy to understand AI insights? So uh, I hope actually, uh, at least for this uh, short, share when we can provide some insights to you and then during the workshop you also have taste it and also and have some ideas and feedback and sharing with us at the end uh, uh before talking about ai i want to talk show one image or figure on uh data visualization first so visualization is for human interpretation and ai is using the data instead of human to interpret is giving machine to interpret so maybe we can start from human interpretation first uh, so this is a YouTube uh, insight, so showing a, a video. So uh, so how many or how much proportion of the audience watch the video at that mo certain moment. And here shows an example of an educational video. Uh, so here showing uh, at the beginning, all, all audience start to watch the video, that's uh, trivial. And, but of course, uh, they are starting from the first second, there will be around 30% students drop. So, and then at the end, but they start to take it up, take it up until this moment and they drop again and then we have a sharp hit. Uh, and then we can give some, uh, we can have some insights. For example, the first part is about explanation of the techniques. Uh, this certain moment is about, or oh, we need to, for this question, we need to calculate C1, C2, A and B. And then the rest of the steps is about the steps for calculation. And then this certain moment is about the answer. So you can see how students browse the video. I, I believe uh, all of us right now will go back to for, uh, for physical lectures, but uh, in the previous uh, academics, I think all of us will teach online and you can actually draw some insights from these kind of things. Uh, what I want you, what I can interpret is uh, whether we need, if there are some missing clips or, or points that haven't been addressed by or watched by the students, we have to teach them a game and we have to see for computing steps, whether we need to speed it up or we just, just keep it and should we move the conclusion to uh, before showing the answers so such that the students will not just not drop the video. So these are some uh, very simple interpretations. I believe uh, all teachers able to make some interpretations. Of course, uh, one point is if the, if the retention here is more than 100%, that means uh, every student watch that moment more than once. So that's the problem. 
And that means as students can't understand, they have to rewatch. So these are some moments that you will need to be aware of. So this is the insights we can get from, uh, from those visualizations. And of course, the next step is whether instead of human to making the interpretations, uh, it can machine be the one to make the interpretations and give interventions uh, immediately. So that's the sharing for this uh, website, for this uh, 30 minutes sharing. So let's talk about uh, what AI can do. Uh, so this is a literature review uh, to online before pandemic. I believe uh, after the pandemic, actually every ch everything changed. Uh, but uh, here shows the results uh, from 2019. There's, there are several applications, uh, or, at least from a research perspective. So uh, prediction, so the most classic applications of AI try to predict something based on previous results. Uh, of course, uh, we can provide some insights, just what I shown to you, uh, but a machine can do the interpretations. So provide the insights, predict the drop rates, retention and engagement. I think for, for US, they will be more, it's more important because uh, they have a high retention, uh, drop out rate. But for Hong Kong, most of us, most of the learners can finish the degree. So uh, that's why uh, retention, degree retention is not that important in Hong Kong, but uh, you may still want to make some engagement or uh, predict the scores to find out who will fail the course, et cetera. And uh, we can be used for curriculum level, course level, uh, videos level. So uh, different researchers try different kinds of uh, predictions and then using different kinds of uh, machine learning. So uh, neural network, SVM, et cetera, uh, uh, deep learning, uh, every, uh, lots of researchers use these different kinds of algorithms to do the prediction. So uh, also well studied in the literature. So this is it because it is the most classic application. So let me change to the full, by the way, let me change to full screen first. Okay. Uh, and the second one is about the uh, adaptive system. So yes, adaptive systems. So talking about not just the uh, prediction of whether the, this student will fail the course or uh, et cetera, it's also more on uh, giving some suggestions to them. So recommend some content based on their previous record uh, or based on their existing uh, assessments, et cetera provide personalized results, uh, content for them, uh, just like YouTube, yes. So after you watching the first video, based on the previous track record, YouTube can suggest you another video or TED Talk, uh, et cetera. So this is a recommendation. Again, also a classic application in, uh, in, uh, in AI. So it's to guide students to do something next. So if they, instead of, uh, because teachers may not be able to provide dedicated support for every student, uh, in the, at the midnight or 24 seven. So this kind of systems, AI system can help to provide some personalized uh, adaptation. And similar things happens for the intelligent tutor system. So uh, again, responding to students feedback. So uh, to understand what are uh, uh, asking students to answer questions or answering students questions. So students type the questions and then the, the system can respond immediately um, and et cetera, et cetera. And of course, uh, we will talk about more about this, the tutoring, intelligent tutoring system in the chatbot tutor later on the next part. So, uh, and then assessment and evaluation. So most likely through the natural language processing or test mining or the test uh, work, work processing or computational linguistics. So they are not the same thing, but they are related to each other. Uh, but for of course for for uh, for typical or uh, for for layman uh, assessment and evaluation is more on the essay uh, grading or marking. So uh, there are again lots of studies on uh, creating essay marking engine. Uh, for example, I uh, here show some of the re I will show some of some results. Uh, and uh, whether so some some teachers may want to ask. Uh, whether there are some mature uh, uh, marking systems is actually somehow uh, partially yes. If you are talking about a specific topic, so actually the automated essay marking system is okay. Uh, I, I can show you some examples later. And then, uh, so for assessing the content is actually case specific, but if you change the topic, uh, essay topics, it will be very difficult for the marking. But if you're just talking about uh, language, writing, or organizations, all those things, 
And then this kind of uh, essay marking systems actually can help to do assessment. And then of course, providing feedback before the submission. Uh, this is even more important, so in my opinion. So uh, because uh, for teachers, we may be able to mark the final essay, the final copy. But uh, if students want to have continuous feedback or comments before the final submission, so most of the time, uh, teachers may not be able to support of all teachers, all students. So that's why this kind of grading or evaluation system is not for final scores, it's for providing feedback during the writing process. So uh, if we use as for this for food, uh, if you use it for this kind of uh, intermediate evaluation or feedback, it will be very helpful. So uh, maybe let me, uh, I will show you some examples later on. So on the these three kinds of uh, four kinds of applications. Uh, so of course, besides all those four uh, major applications, so let's talk about some other adoption. So this is uh, from Hall IK, one of the educational consultant um, or consultant firm. So proposed again in 2009 before pandemic. Uh, again, things changed a lot after the pandemic. Uh, but uh, here shows the AI adoption in different kinds of applications. Um, you can see the pre-K is the least uh, adopt. So it's, 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 it's normal, it's trivial. First of all, it's difficult to collect baby's data. Uh, so we have lots of concern to go for. And then second, uh, when the children or baby cry, you don't know what, uh, what he or she is thinking. So, uh, so the interpretation is even by human is difficult. So making uh, machines will be even more difficult to make the judgment. So the pre-K is difficult, but you can see there are some dark colors that mean it has been widely adopted. For example, assessment, for example, language learning. So these are large scale applications. For example, uh, for English learning, there are lots of AI systems already. Uh, also language tests, et cetera. So because uh, if you're talking about uh, English learning, you're talking about millions, billions of learners. And of course, uh, there are also some other uh, situations, robotics, uh, games, et cetera, because they originally uh, e-learning system already or e-system already, uh, collecting data for analysis is not that difficult. So you can see this is a, a overall uh, adoption, the overall landscape of the adoption of, of AI. So uh, things change a lot, of course, uh, and keep changing. Um, PK and uh, for university, they are still start to use it, etc. Okay, so before uh, after talking about the uh, landscape, let's talk about applications. Uh, for 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 typical teachers, for most of the teachers, we what we want is uh, products rather than uh, frontier research. Uh, for for products, there are also some other some existing commercial uh, products. For example, if we are referring to predictions. So uh, this is the group, and then uh, so using so using based on your existing learning records, they can suggest you some other learning materials and questions. So uh, this is one of them. You can check the videos for uh, informations, and for natural language processing. Uh, so I I believe uh some of us may heard about the Grammarly. Of course, it's a kind of a, a profiling feedback system. So uh, suggesting uh, how should we revise or update the writing or oh, spelling mistake, grand, language writing, uh, language correction, tone correction, etc. So Grammarly. So I believe uh, some students and even some of us use it before. Uh, another one is actually from Attorney Yin. I'm not sure uh, uh, with uh, Xi'an University is using uh, Attorney Yin for the plagiarism detection. So uh, for for uh, turning in, they also have uh, different kinds of marking softwares. So one of them is the revision assistant uh, focus on essay uh, commenting. So uh, so instead of talking through a static image, so let me show you a uh, demo here. So this is the turning in revision assistance. And uh, you can see get into when you get into these systems, they will show uh, uh, you, the students have to import their writing. So that's the prompt, the question, and then the free writing asking students to write something uh, to build up the structure of the essay. So P writing process, and then they will, uh, and they ask the students to submit the draft as they call signal chat to do the uh, detection or 
character creation. Of course, uh, the system will provide way that uh, the drug is too short, so ask them to do something more. If it's not, it's, if it's not enough, they will start the analysis. We can see the writing here. They will give you some uh, organization or writing recommendations, whether you have a correct uh, or, or appropriate organization language skills, uh, the evidence is support enough or the claim is clear enough or not. So we'll have these kinds of uh, information and providing some uh, recommendations. So talking about recommendations, what kind of struggles and then how to update and revise, et cetera. Yes, and then here shows the proof remote and then you can see they can keep updating. And then uh, the turn in, what they mentioned is they want students to keep improving the writing. So such that uh, the scores increase after uh, the feedback process. So students receive the feedback and then we write and then fit into turning again and then to in order to have a higher score. Now, of course, you can see these are not related to content. They are all related to uh, they are all related to uh, language writing only. So this is the turning in revision assistance. I think that's that's the that's that's all for the down uh, for the explanation for turning in. So let me go back to the slides. So let me go back to full screen. Okay. So uh, this kind of tools you can actually use. And for, uh, I noticed that uh, for turning in, uh, I, I mean revision assistant, uh, they have been adopted in US K-12 schools already. I know that in Hong Kong, they also, there are some similar systems developed by Hong Kong startups and also has been used in uh, K-12 schools in Hong Kong also, high schools. So you can uh, search around if you need it, or uh, if you adopt it, you can contact turn it in for some advice, uh, the course, etc. And then another one also from turn it in. So it's uh, actually uh, using image processing to group similar uh, answers together. So for turn it in, they have another software called Grayscope, a very small one. So instead of essay marking, they, they try to tackle uh, STEM question marking. And they what of course uh, the system cannot interpret or understand the drawings or chemical equations or graphs, etc. So because there are too many variations, but they can try to group similar uh, answers together and then let the uh, let the teacher to do the grouping, uh, the marking just by dash by dash. So instead of marking two hundred assignments, you just need to mark five. Uh, uh, five uh, samples and each sample corresponds to a certain uh, answer or, or type of uh, answers, etc. So, so they use the image processing for grouping of answers. And you can see this is a very simple example. Uh, so if the answers, uh, the students write 20 here, you can see there are around 20, uh, 11 of them mark uh, 20 here. And you can see there are four of them mark 80 here. So instead of uh, marking uh, 15, uh, answers you have to just need to mark two so this can speed up the uh again the evaluation process so this is a great scope uh, turning in they have uh, a quite different surface on uh, provide a different kind of surface on the uh, on the feedback and assessment okay so uh, i can spend uh, some time uh, a few more minutes on chatbot a overall introduction so uh so uh, on AI in, uh, chatbot introduction before going to the workshops later on. So a, a quick demo. So here shows the chatbot tutor. So, uh, so uh, around one minute. So let me share with you the video. Ever feels like there is not much chance for interactions in class? Or ever wanting to get instant responses when professors or tutors are not available? With chat bar tutors containing data with a wide range of possible questions and answers, the above situations would be improved. Chat bar tutor acts as a medium linking teachers and students through natural and educational conversations. Teachers would only need to focus on the conversation design, but not the technical aspect. Now, students can receive instant responses for their questions anytime, anywhere. The responses would be personalized, exactly what the students need. Lessons could be engaging even with a large group of students. 
tasks like answering commonly asked questions, carrying out interactive activities and evaluating students' performance could now be done by chatbot tutors. With easy-to-use development platforms like Dialogflow and Watson, creating a chatbot is not difficult. So you can see that the, this kind of chatbot tutor is more on providing standardized feedback uh, based on students' inquiries. Uh, we will, we, you will, and so and we will and you will develop a chatbot uh, by yourself so, uh, the, during today's uh, workshop. Okay, so this is uh, a, a very traditional chatbot. So we have something extra. So this is the uh, chatbot, again, chatbot, but used for inquiry-based learning. So it's much more advanced. And that means uh the investment will be much uh will be much more yes so but I, I, again uh, I can show you a video to to let you know what chatbot can do in T N L. The current system is a prototype of a larger game development project in a crime investigation course at university level. The course adopts an inquiry-based learning design, which emphasizes active learning and knowledge construction. The underlying principles are introduced in the lecture series covering crime scene investigation, forensic medicine, forensic psychology, computer forensics, and laboratory science. One of the assessment tasks in the course is a crime investigation project. Through the investigation process, students learn to make good observations, identify and formulate the critical issues in the case by asking the right questions. As our university is moving to a more student-centered learning environment, we partnered with the Technology and Rich Learning Initiative Unit on our campus to integrate technology into classroom teaching. In this game, we will be leveraging on a commercial-based chatbot platform to create multiple chatbots that will serve as the different characters in the game. Students will start with the initial police report and they will attend the scene and meet the first responders, who are represented by chatbots. In every stage, they will discover new leads, new parts of the map, and other evidence that will help them in their investigation. At the end of each stage, the students will go through an intensive briefing where the superintendent chatbot will ask them a series of questions to verify their findings and to elicit further hypotheses that will then lead to further investigative actions. So you can see this is uh, one of the uh, chatbot development. So on the inquiry B based learning. So uh, those chatbot pretend as the as a witness and in the uh, in the crime scene, and then you can uh, students can use the um, mobile phone and then to communicate with them. So this is another way using chatbot. So not just for administration, but uh, as a actor or role playing uh, purpose. Um, so there are also some different opportunities and challenges using chatbots. Um, actually, Professor Huang from uh, Taiwan, so also did a review in 2021. So try to find out uh, how it has been used or it can be used. Uh, you can see uh, uh, Professor Professor Hua mentioned so it will can be used in language, engineering, and computers. Try to have the productive talk, just like the uh, witness student conversation, to have the productive talk where between students and chatbot. Learn how to learn about the communication skills, etc. Though in particular, he mentioned the losing communication skills example. So uh, to learn how to communicate. And then the second uh, aspect is actually guide learning. So giving instructions, so uh, through scaffolding and then giving instructions to students and to guide them to learn. And also do uh, some of these two will be more on the uh, evaluations. So uh, try to for forecast their competencies. And uh, since uh, it's communication, uh, students can communicate with bots, so they, can, they are more interested to raise questions. So uh, for the previous example, so uh, uh, I, rem I remember for if uh, students just ask if they don't use, uh, still teachers don't use the chatbot, the students just raise a few questions. But for, for the bot, I remember the students raised more than 20 questions uh, in the chatbot. So asking these and that, et cetera. So again, because you are not communicating with your teachers, right? So it's a, just a bot. So that's why they are more interested to raise questions. 
and then keep uh, keep the conversation. And also the feedback is much faster. So when we communicate with teachers, maybe the feedback will have to be, uh, for example, 20 minutes or even one day later. Um, but for bot, it will be just uh, one or two seconds. So which stimulates students keep uh, asking questions. So this is uh, some opportunities. Uh, of course, uh, so this is just an example on bots because uh, why I picked this one? Because uh, chatbots become more and more popular. So uh, I will run a conference next, uh, next week and uh, around within 200, uh, within uh, 120 papers, around five to six of them are about chatbot. So uh, 120 papers about all kinds of uh, learning technologies, five to six of them are about chatbot. So here shows, so that's why they, they are keep and they, uh, they keep having more and more papers every year. So you can think about, and it's easy to develop. You will have the experience later on to develop your own bot. But of course, I go back to a uh, more high level perspective. So is a AI a silver bullet for teaching and learning? Can it, can it, uh, uh, can AI replace teachers anyway? So in the future, uh, it's not actually, so in my opinion. So of course, uh, because AI depends on data, so existing data. So existing data is most of the time not structured. It has to be labeled or coded by human first. So, uh, and then of course, uh, uh, AI can do the automation, go for automated feedback and response to students anytime, anywhere, uh, et cetera. But uh, most of the time the gender penetration is limited. Now, uh, more important is uh, when, when teachers uh, collect or receive the insights, so they can provide that intervention. So teachers play an important role to leverage on the AI for uh, giving the uh, to uh, leverage on the AI to uh, amplify the teaching and learning. So that's more important. So AI is not a silver bullet, but it's a good tool to uh, for us to leverage on. Uh, before the end of the today's share, I would like to share share two things. So we just we, we, in the previous class we talked about how we can use AI, um, how we can use AI for TNL. My second question will be or part of, of a few slides about when AI has been introduced. So not just for TNL. So right now we have AI. Uh, when students can use AI. So what will be the difference? So do we need to teach, for example, do we need to teach students to work with AI together? So such that they can do something more. So here shows an example. So this is a, this is a, a, a figure created by me. So actually it's by Nick Journey. So AI generated drawing engine. And then what I want to describe in this figure is actually about SDG4, so quality education. And uh, by giving some parameters and descriptions, the computer or the AI system can help me to generate this figure. So I can share you some more figures. So this is uh, on uh, a somehow like library and I can have some more. So you can see, uh, I also, uh, for every SDG, I try to create some AI, AI generated figures. And you can see uh, the machine can actually create something which can be used for visual communications. And then my question for you is whether uh, you can ask students also to create something like this for sharing to others impacting the community. So, uh, so that's uh, something that I would like to think about. So talking about uh, using AI is uh, helping students to learn how to use AI to impact or influence the community. And then another one is uh, we start to think about whether students will use AI to, uh, to answer the assignments. So this is uh, one of the article where maybe you can spend 10 seconds to read it first. Okay, so this is a uh, article or a, a paragraph or create by AI. So uh, this is from Guardian. So from Guardian 2022, and they use the generative P train transformer, so GPT-3, so and and to create the essay. And they have so this is just part of the of the whole article. And you can see if you are talking about sentence level, 
uh, the, the AI system can do the can do the work already. If we're talking about paragraph level, sometimes you may discover is have uh, is the the relationship are not logical. The the organization is not logical. But uh, if you if you are uh, sleepy, if the marker or the grid is sleepy, most likely uh, the this article is actually okay. So that's why we have to start to think about where the students in the future will create their own system and then yeah, create uh, generate essays for assign for 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 submitting an assignment. So uh, GPT three yeah, has been uh, created by two o two o. I know right now in two o this year two years later. They start to have the GPT four already, so that's why the essay AI essay writing will become more and more mature. That means the article will be more structured, etc. Of course, uh, building this kind of essay writing engine is not that easy. He's talking about uh one hundred billion parameters. So and then they have all the data from different types of websites, Wikipedia, book collections, etc. You can search for it. Um. Uh, it's accurate at sentence level, some glitches for paragraph level. Maybe right now, 2022, uh, 2022 version will be much more uh, complete and mature. Uh, the question for teachers, for us, is should we start to think about how to design our essay questions or essay assignment? Or should we just, uh, instead of design, writing essays, should we design something else for assessments? So these are something that I want you to think about. Again, uh, so this is a short sharing, so around uh, 30 minutes uh, on, on, on AI. So um, uh, right now, I'm also a, a PI for a UGC project uh, called Yi Ting Ching for you. So providing different kinds of uh, trainings for, for teachers uh, in Hong Kong and beyond Hong Kong. So we talk about AI, we talk about VR, we talk about copyright in Hong Kong U. So, so that's why uh, so that's why we would like uh, you can have a look. And then our part, part will be the skill and a session when we can have more discussions within the uh, within the uh, background monitor off. But uh, before going to background room, uh, let me pass the mic to Cindy. Uh, she, she will also share something about the uh, share something about the chat uh, chatbot development first before going to the background room. So let me uh, pass the mic to Cindy. Hello. Um. Thank you, Leon. Um. So, sorry. Excuse me, Stila. Um. I think we need to close the breakout room now because I can see some audiences. They just jump into the breakout room. Thank you. Um. Actually, before the hands-on exercise, um, I would like to share some more. Okay. Okay. So um, thanks to Dr. Lei uh, to introduce about, uh, to give us some good examples, good practices of how AI technology can be used for teaching, learning, and even assessment. So um, specifically, I am going to introduce uh, something about the chatbot. And later we will have the hands-on exercise to try to develop a um, code-free chatbot by ourselves. Um, uh, based like regarding those very good practices, we can see um, the AI technology or the chatbot can do a lot to facilitate TNL. But how about um, starting from a one man team um, so that we can try to build a code free or load code chatbot? Okay, so here's the rundown. Um, here comes our second part of today's sharing. Um, firstly, I will give a brief introduction uh, about the chatbot, and then we will have hands-on exercise in two breakout rooms. Then we will do the debriefing in the breakout room as well. Okay, the objectives. So first thing, we need to think of two questions. The first one is, what are the basic structures and processes, or we can say the workflow? involved in developing a chatbot. So here I give you like three terms that we will use later, intents, entities, and responses. And the second question is, how can we design chatbots without a strong technical background? So today's session, we would like to give you some understandings of how uh, we can build the chatbot and then later, um, if you have any idea or if you see the potential of 
building or applying the AI technology, AI chatbot in your classrooms, then uh, you, this session will help us to better communicate with the programmer or the developers to help build up that chatbot for the TNL purposes. Okay, so what's a chatbot? Um, although uh, Leon just showed us some very fancy good examples, um, here I would like to show you a very simple design of the AI chatbot. So now we can see it's a mobile-based uh, chatbot. Okay, um, so before jumping into the chatbot things, um, maybe we can identify that this is a conversation between like between two people, right? Uh, someone is uh, trying to ordering coffee and uh, muffins in the step in Starbucks. So how do chatbot dialogues work? So here I would like to show you a float. Um, so just think of the conversation I just show you, and then you can you may identify um there's someone try to uh input try to um type in some input. Uh, basically that will be some questions, and then there will be output or we say the responses based on the questions. So um in the chatbot we can identify them as two things, the front end and the back end. So the front end is what you can see, for example, the button and then uh, the interface. So like the one we just seen, um, that's a mobile based uh, application. Uh, or we can also see the chatbots being used on, uh, on web pages or the application mobile apps. And then the back end side, um, there will be some possible outputs, um, let's say the responses based on the database for user inputs. So um, I think the uh, the challenge part for a one-man team to develop a chatbot is we need to have sufficient database for the user inputs. And then we need to design uh, those dialogues in the design platforms to develop a chatbot. And today in the hands-on part, we will use a chatbot tool called Dialog Float to try to uh, de design and develop some dialogues. Okay, and here um, specifically, I will show you an example to see how do chatbot dialogues work. So like I mentioned, uh, firstly, we will have user inputs. For example, here I would like to ask about um, the assignment. So I'm typing the questions, what is the pro project deadlines? And then the user input will through the system, um, through the web page, through the, um, the dialogue-like uh, conversation chat box. And then the bot will think of three steps before answering the user. So step one is intent matching. For example, in this situation, uh, I'm asking what is the project deadline, and the bot will firstly recognize what the user wants. So in these situations, we can identify that, okay, the intention is to ask for deadlines. And then step two, the bot will try to identify things the user mentioned. For example, here, um, asking for deadlines, but it's, uh, what's the deadline? The deadline for what? Okay, so the deadline for the project. And then step three, uh, the bot will take actions and or respond accordingly. So um, in this sense, the bot will try to interact with the users. But how to interact with the users uh, for the actions? Okay, the bot might check for the deadlines, especially for the project, uh, not the reading or essay, but the project. And then Respond with the answer. It says um, the deadline is December the 5th. 
And then if we want the chatbot sounds or looks smarter, then we can add one more sentence to ask the question, to ask the user, say like um, anything else you want. So in this sense, uh, the language will be more natural. So after these three steps um, analysis, then the bot, uh, we try to answer, we try to respond to the user, and then the user can later decide on um, if he or she will end the conversations or tr keep the dialogue uh, going um, to, uh, for example, like ask more questions. Okay, so the chatbot building flow based on the two dialogue flow. So firstly, um, it's all about the design. Um, before we try to develop the chatbot, I think we need to design the details. We need to design the layout, the interface, uh, the button, the, the um, is it, is it will be, the, the chatbot will be used in those social media platforms or web-based one. So as you can see to the left-hand side, this is a course trial that I created today. Um, if I, if I try to, if, I, the, if, if the user try to type in a hi, hello, and the bot will uh, respond to the user. And then to the right-hand side, you can see an Excel table. So this is what I will call it database. So I will try to list out um, those materials, uh, those um, possible user inputs and possible um, questions and basically, I will put them into four categories, intents, entities, training phrases, and responses. Um, later, um, I will share the handout with you. And that's the material that uh, this is some, this is the material that we will use for the hands-on session later. And after designing with um, many, uh, with much information, many details, then we will start to develop the bot on the design platform. So here's the interface of the page of dialogue folds. So basically uh, there will be three parts, but I show you two, of, uh, two, two sections of the interface here. Uh, later we will uh, see, we can see more in the hands-on sections. Um, and in this session, because uh, we just want to give you some sense of understanding how we can develop a chatbot in dialogue fold. So we will only focus on intent entities and how to um, how to share the chatbot through integrations. And then the right hand side, or in or the actually it is the middle part of the dialog float um, page. So this is the design area that we will work on. And then after that uh, deployment, so um, like I mentioned, uh, just mentioned just now, the integrations. Once we go to the integrations that we can see, actually they provide us many with many choices. Um, for example, the uh, mobile, uh, the web, web page based um, conversation uh, just enabled with the, uh, enabled by the web demo one, but we can also use, apply the chatbot in different social media um, tools. For example, Facebook Messenger, Slack, Twitter, um, Telegram, et cetera. Okay. Um, the, the dialogue flow, um, before we jump into the hands-on sessions, uh, let's have some sense of the common design language. So um, I mentioned, I actually mentioned these three terms a lot, um, intent, entity, and responses. But what are these terms? So the intent is a group of examples that describe same user's intentions. For example, um, uh, in the previous example, I, I want to ask about the deadlines for the projects. So that's the intent. I'm going to ask for the deadlines. And you still might ask the same questions in various ways. So for example, um, uh, example one, I identification. I can ask question like, what's your name? Or who are you? So for the deadline, I can ask, 
when's the deadline, when should I submit, when's the due date. So you can see I can um, the, the users, they might use synonyms of to express the same intention, deadline, uh, when submit, due date, and then entities. So for the same entities, basically the questions, uh, users may ask about different details. So the entity represents a specific detail in user's input. For example, the intent is to ask for the deadline, but um, if it is used for TNL purposes, the deadlines, we might have different deadlines for different assessments. For example, I can ask about the deadline for the reading, the deadline for the essay, or the deadline for the project. So in this one, I can recognize different entities, for example, reading, essay, and project. So same intent, but different entities. And then responses. So the responses um, refers to how the chatbot replies. So this is what I mentioned previously. Uh, we need to um, have a database of those intents and entities so that the chatbot will know can recognize, I will note how the, the bot can reply to the user. For example, if the bot recognize um, intents, the deadline and the entities, essay, then the bot can reply with the deadline for the essay is December the 1st. So um, in the front end, what we can see is the user input was the deadline for the essay. And then the bot, like after that three steps analysis, the, the recognition, the analyze, right? And then the bot will reply with the answer. The deadline for the essay is December the 1st. Okay, so may I invite Stella to help enable the breakout rooms? So in the breakout rooms, um, we will build our first dialogue.